to every group that the NHS has to offer. So if I have Panadol, I have to carry adrenaline. Do you know, it's, it's not huge fun. So chemo and radio was a bit of a stretch, I'll be honest with you. Um, what happened from there, I expected to take everything the NHS had to offer apart from chemo and radio. I didn't know that was all the NHS could offer. Uh, people who know me will tell you I'm NHS through and through. They're one of the best public services we have um, and we need to protect that. So for me to find out that we'd completely um, hamstrung our NHS was a shock to the system. To then find out that in this country what happens is that minors don't have a choice of declining treatment. So anybody under 16 who gets the illness in this country has to have chemo and radio irrespective of what their family thinks. So I'm starting with the harshest bit. And basically the big deal for me is so what? What are we looking for? What are we finding out that impacts on these numbers? If we say that more than one in two are going to have cancer, if we say that we're going to carry on burning our babies, sorry for the phrase, but that's how it feels to me. If that's what we're going to say, we're going to do, sorry, and that's the bit that chokes me. That's the bit that's choked me, not the, not the cancer, sorry. How, I don't understand how in a decent civilization we say, one in two are going to get this, but our only options brutalise the body. As a strength-based coach, I always look at what does great look like and work back from there. As Ted was saying, what are the questions? And for me, so what? And we've completely hampered the NHS, the biggest healthcare provider in the world, who doesn't have a chance to interact with cancer. I'd like to say, that isn't about the NHS, that's about an internal fear and trying to protect themselves.